Welcome to Better Preparedness. This episode is about how to make weekend safaris safer and, well, how to be better prepared. Now, what I broke this down into is 11 key steps. And right now, I'm in Northern Kruger National Park in South Africa. We've been here for a third day. We still have one more big day tomorrow. And well, we're up for a 4.15 a.m. game drive this morning provided by the National Park, what well, we paid for it, of course. And um, my family was pretty tired for an afternoon game drive. So here I am on my own. I thought I'd take the opportunity though to film this episode since there's no better time to think of it than when you're actually doing it. So number one, well, you have to choose the location where you're going to go to. This is where you do a bit of your research. It depends you might be flying to Southern Africa or East Africa. So you have to think about uh, how far you want to travel, how you're going to get there. Are you self-driving? Are you flying? Is somebody providing all of the transportation for you? Is it sort of package thing? And so you may have to drive to reach that location. But then you also have to factor in the traveling around. Kruger is huge. You can spend a week in this park. Uh, and it's such a difference between the north and the south and the center. And make sure you think through where it is you want to go because that can be a private reserve as well. Secondly, you've got to think through the vehicle and the suitability of it. Quite often you'll see people arrive and rent a Toyota Corolla, for example, so just a, a street car. But that's going to limit a little bit the types of terrain you can drive. Now in Kruger, they do have a main, main road, kind of a north-south road that is paved, and then they have degrees of secondary road. So you, know, you can drive certain types of that road in, in a road car, but again, plan for what you're trying to do. A bit more of a sturdier off-road vehicle allows you to do a little bit more with a little bit less risk. And you've got to think through what are the tires that, that are on the vehicle. Are they off-road tires? Are they real street tires? Because again, you just look at the number of hazards we encounter every kilometer. And this is thorns, these are big branches, rocks, and all kinds of things. Also the clearance and the undercarriage. Now when you're driving, you can have rocks, you could have something that could be maybe a bit more exposed because of some recent rain. So you gotta make sure that that undercarriage is not at risk of being damaged. Navigation and your route. Well, you've gotta plan this out carefully. I highly, highly recommend pick up a map of the place where you are. Kruger has a, has a great national park map. And you know, the more detailed the map, the more information you're gonna hopefully get as to how big a road it is or how much of a secondary road it is. And make sure you ask when you're at the gate, ask what the conditions of the roads are. And I highly recommend, we have in the car right now with us, we have a compass. And when you get to certain intersections that might be poorly marked, it really helps to know just wait, where's north? Where, which way's south? Uh, which way's this? intersection taking us and you also still once you've been driving a few kilometers continue to monitor that because these roads can weave so what seemed to be a road going north I'm just having to make sure that there's nothing around me here because I've got the door open and the, the tripod sitting here so it's just open a little bit but I'm definitely continuing to monitor any sounds I hear and you know the elephants are over there at the watering hole that you hear creaks and cracks every, every couple of minutes so get a compass, buy the map for the park, ask about it, and get updates on the road conditions because that can really change. These, these maps are printed years before, so you want to make sure that there isn't a road that's washed out and that you, you were planning to take and your route was depending on that. Distances, durations, and gates. Okay, everything just takes longer and you got to just budget that. And I tell you, you know, make sure you plan for slower speeds when you're in game parks, especially on rougher roads. Make sure you give yourself ample time. It's better to depart in the morning and do your traveling through the day. You allow time for problems or stops, and so you can enjoy yourself a lot more along the way. And make sure you find out what is the cutoff time for, for example, the gate to get into that park? Then there's a secondary cutoff time. When do you have to be 
in your accommodation camp. Now, we're staying at Mopani Rest Camp here in the north part of Kruger, and there's a cutoff of 6 p.m. So you've got to factor in not only the gate of getting into the national park, but we had two hours of driving, an hour and a half to two hours of driving once we entered the gate that we came in to entering our, our camp at Mopani. So you've got to factor that in because you don't want to be caught out. Plus, in certain parts of the world, the, the sunsets uh, are earlier as well. So factor that in. One of the things with distances you got to factor in is also your refueling. I like to refuel far more often in a game park than I would out in the normal world. In the normal world, I try to refuel once I'm about half tank to keep a reserve, but make sure you refuel and have a plenty, plenty of reserve. If you ever got stuck out overnight, it's nice to have that extra fuel as well. And sometimes if a roadway is cut off and you have to do a long you know, roundabout route way to, to get around that, you're going to need more fuel. And of course, some of these places in remote areas can have shortages of fuel sometimes. So I, I prefer to keep more than a healthy, healthy reserve. So plan to fill up more often. You really need to think about the weather the time of year that you're looking for. Maybe you don't have a big choice of holiday time options. You have to choose when your kids are off school or when work will allow you to take leave. But remember, Southern Africa and East Africa can have very different climates compared to North America, to Europe, to Asia. And you have to think through a little bit what kind of climate you're going to be having when you would be going there because it can be quite cold at night it can be quite extremely hot right now we're in early october and it's very dry so there's hardly any greenery well, i'm going to show you right now it's, it's very easy to see deep into the bush because there are no leaves on the trees. But when, we're, when you're into the high grasses, once the rains have hit and things have started to grow, you can get some pretty tall grasses and then it's really hard to see stuff. Now, one thing we've noticed is that all these water pans are dried up unless the artificial springs. But when the bushes are full of leaves and the grasses are tall, you have to think about uh, that element and also Sorry, this camera's getting a bit heavy. Uh, you know, another thing to, to think about is the effect of weather on the roads. Now, a lot of level crossings and so on can become impassable because of rains. And what is passable one day can suddenly be cut off if you get a rain and enough rain falls and, and that dry riverbed or stream bed that you're planning on taking or crossing or counting on crossing is suddenly impassable. You know, even more so when you're talking about a two-wheel drive road car like a sedan or a hatchback. But even if you're driving a 4x4 like we have a, a Toyota 4x4, so it sits pretty well off the ground. You still got to be concerned about flooding the engine and stuff if you try to be too ambitious and you get stuck uh, in the worst places, then you're in, you're in big trouble. And you gotta think about communications and how can you call for help? Uh, what numbers do you need to call? What is the range of services you could really count on? So think through the weather, think through the climate of where you're going, the time of the year. Is it gonna be very super cold at night? Uh, is it gonna be really pleasant? Like this is a gorgeous time of the year, not too hot, really comfortable sleeping weather. Number six is Health, malaria, and first aid. Well, malaria is just an example, an illness that you can contract if you're not careful. And so we're taking anti-malarials right now. Here in Kruger, there is the chance of malaria. Make sure you plan for your travel medications, have that with you to be able to deal with uh, whatever type of issue or incident health-wise you have. A first aid kit, don't want to get injured and uh, not be able to treat yourself. So first aid kit, medications, make sure you do your check on your vaccinations that you need for traveling to wherever it is, be it uh, South, Southern Africa or, or East Africa, for example. Supplies and availability, this is uh, would be point number seven. So make sure you do your research where you're going, especially if you're gonna be in a national park for a lot longer, you'll probably wanna bring in more supplies with you. And because yes, there are a few stores that 
the rest camp where we were today and at, at in this park there's a few, some stores they have a limited supply and some decent supplies there but I think you'll probably want to stock up on the way in and also find out do you need to be stocking up on drinking water I would I'll have to I'll have to show you a bit later after towards the end of the video I'm going to put some footage of this herd of about 40 elephants that are over there at a watering hole you know plan in advance make sure you plan for a lot more drinking water uh, have a stock with you uh, why not right uh, if you get stuck out and you're stuck for a couple of days because of a broke breakdown on a remote roadway well you're going to want to have those supplies children and safaris uh, my children are fantastic travelers and and really good safari goers now we've we spent the whole day in the car yesterday and they were great about it. They do have their threshold of what they can really pay attention to. So bring some books and some music for them to listen to while you're driving and you can get some really good animal book. Each kid can have their own animal book. <laughs> Just making sure there isn't anything going on that I need to know about behind me. Make sure you have those kids books that the kids can follow along and uh, do things and look up the animals and find do their research it really pays off and you know have an extra map book and they can follow along as to where you're going equipment and dust okay well here i am filming with my new dslr and one thing i notice is that even with turning the air condition like the air system off and, and various things you're going to get dust coming into the car and you want to protect the equipment so when I'm not taking a photo or using my camera it just goes right back into the camera case and I have it handy so I can easily put it back in and take it back out but things like binoculars, your cell phone there's all kinds of equipment uh, that will get impacted make sure you have extra batteries and charging abilities I bring a power bar because sometimes you might only have one power outlet in a room and I have the one that I have that has a surge protector in it as well because I'm plugging in so many key devices and, and things to charge. A power bar, maybe an extension cord, and make sure you can charge all of your devices. And repair gear in your emergency kit. Well, I can't emphasize enough. When things go wrong, to a large extent, you're going to have to repair it on your own. And when you're renting a car, you want to know, you really want to know how to replace the flat tire, for example. And keep in mind, most cars only have or one spare tire so if you get a flat that's your one chance you don't want to risk a second one we always have a bike pump but you can have a mini compressor with you and you can bring this in your check-in luggage you know having a bike pump allows you in the case of a slow leak to potentially keep pumping up your your tire we i've done it before we did our morocco and it really saved us you can keep adding air and that'll help get you out of a dangerous place like you wouldn't want to be here overnight there's a camp nearby, probably 25k from here. So in a pinch, if we had a little slow leak, I could certainly top up the air and uh, that'll help us get out of here. If you have an emergency kit for your car, normally back home, wherever that is, well, you can bring elements of that with you. They are booster cables for if the battery goes flat, just things to get you out of a pinch. And you just don't want to be in a situation where you're not able to deal with things yourself. So a little repair kit, some crazy glue, some zip ties, some duct tape. You know, whatever you need to really fix most of your anticipated problems. I'm just keeping an eye on a rather large male elephant that's only about 50 meters away. And well, that... <laughs> I, I hope you caught that. So that brings me to animal safety. You've got your big animals like these. Just keep your distance and make sure you have a healthy distance. Normally, if they're anywhere close, I have the engine running and the, the, my foot on the clutch. You know, I'm in first gear, so if we have to, we can move away. And you want to be care very careful about the animals on... Sorry. I'm just going to keep an eye on this guy. I think. I hope you can see that. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up really quickly and get this camera in. Now, you want to make sure that when you're driving, you're not going too fast so you can react to animals getting out on the road. And 
I'm just gonna take the opportunity. This guy's getting a little bit too close. So you want to make sure you give yourself the opportunity to avoid incidents with animals on the road and don't underestimate monkeys and baboons. They have an incredible ability to get into cars and really they're, they're after your food. So really make sure you have your windows rolled up whenever you're stopped. You, know, you don't have to be paranoid about them, but be really proactive and don't leave food out. Keep your cooler in your car. Keep your food in your car and your car locked. If there are baboons around, don't underestimate their ability. They can open car doors and just keep it healthy, healthy. Okay, that huge, huge adult elephant there with the massive tusks. He's separated himself from the group, so I was just keeping an eye. But anyways, all this to say, be prepared, do your planning, do your research, don't take risks, and you can have an amazing experience. But the better you plan, the more you're gonna have something that is manageable. You're gonna have something that is manageable. You're gonna not be burnt out by too much driving and hopefully you can have a, an amazing experience. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up, but right now I'm gonna turn it over to this absolute amazing herd. It's gotta be about 50. No, I'll make that 60 elephants in that herd. And they just keep arriving. And there's a giraffe in the background that's kind of keeping its, keeping its distance. Amazing. Enjoy these other episodes? Click that like and click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Better preparedness.